That was hot. Come on, big yeah. <laughs> He's on fire! Come on! <laughs> I'm on fire! <laughs> So we just finished race one for the day and just before we were going to race I went out and did a couple laps and I discovered my driver's side front brake pad was completely toast just screaming at me so 15 minutes to go before the race I swapped out that pad got out there on the back of the pack uh, was doing doing okay was having lots of fun uh, and about 25 minutes into the 45 minute race, I discovered my other side brake pad was starting to go bad. And so I had to switch exclusively to my e brake for all my braking. And of course, I didn't finish last because somebody just DNF'd, so that's always good. Uh, they're about to weigh us. I'm afraid I'm going to be a little underweight because I wasn't able to get my cooler set up because I was changing out brake pads. Also, been experimenting with my fuel levels. I've been trying to end the race with as little fuel as possible. Uh, so, I'm curious, I'm curious what my numbers are gonna be. I'm getting way Give it a neutral. <laughs> push, 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 push. So before we take a look at the last race, I need to say something about the two racing clips I featured for the opening of this video. Those were the only two sketchy moments in the last four races that I filmed, and the two clips happened to be of the same driver. It wasn't intentional, but after the fact, I started feeling like I was humiliating somebody I race with every month. After thinking about it for a few days, I decided showing the clips are for the best. There has been a lot of damage out at the track lately, and I feel like it's not all necessary. We are only racing for pride, first off, and secondly, I don't have money to rebuild my car every race. Most of us are that way. I have a kid and I'm trying to open a speed shop. So here's the deal, if you don't want me to put videos of you crashing your race car on YouTube, just stay away from me. Or just don't dive into an apex while there's another car there. 
I think of the challenge as a gentleman's sport, not a demolition derby. Let's clean it up a little. If you think I'm going like way out of bounds here, let's talk about it down below. Also, I have a service announcement. It's been feeling a little thin out at the track the last few races and Harris Hill has been going all out on the new track. I don't know if you know this, but they repaved the entire surface. They're not paying me to say any of this, but like right now is the time to come out and check out the facility. They need your membership and I need more cars to play with out at the track. I love everybody out at Harris Hill and they have been treating me like family for almost a decade now. You have to experience it. It's like a truly special place in Texas. I linked some info down in the description and leave some comments down below. Let's talk about how badass this track is. All right, let's get to the stuff you came for. And the final video today is fantastic and not for me at all. I went from first to last, but for all the guys and girls who left me in the dust, I got a ton of awesome video of everybody on the track, some 40 cars getting a pass on old number 36. I did make one sporty pass and I'll feature it now. Here it is. Yeah, I did a little juke to the inside, super fun, and pulled away. But it didn't last long. I'm low on power and my tires are shiny when I come off the track. Pretty sure they've reached the max hardness over the COVID break. All right, enough excuses. Let's start the video.
Well, uh, my eyes are kind of getting blurry editing so much video of me losing so horrifically, but that's great timing because if you look right here, you can see the rock that punched a small hole in my radiator. I drove my car to 136 degrees before I noticed anything, and I have two temp gauges on the car. It took me almost 10 minutes to look at them. Uh, that's something I need to work on. I was hoping I caught it in time, but the compression test that night confirmed my f up. My engine is toast. So I'll be having some fun over the next couple of weeks. It's sad because that was a great engine. It was getting low on power, but that sucker ran flawlessly for almost five seasons and never consumed or dripped fluids. It's amazing. My brother has been through four engines in that time, if I'm remembering correct. She was awesome, but that's what you would come to expect from a Miata. They are great race cars, but they're terrible on the street. Don't drive one on the road. People throw shit at you trying to run you over with their giant trucks. I will get it fixed ASAP because I love doing this. And if this is something you've ever dreamed about experiencing, I highly suggest giving Harris Hill a call. See what the deal is. I promise you are missing out. That's all I have for today. I love my subscribers, by the way. I've been getting so much feedback and support for the channel. It makes me feel like maybe I'm on the right track. <clears throat> Next time, we'll be back in the shop, possibly building a custom stainless exhaust for a sick Cam-Am X3, putting down almost 400 horsepower. I want a dyno before and after. Be on the lookout for that video. All right, that is it. Thanks for watching. Oh, and a quick shout out for my new speed shop, Blip Speed Shop. Blip Speed Shop, come check it out. Or just go to our website, I put a link. All right, thank you, bye.